G'day guys, Andrew Dwight here. Hey, um, we're going to talk about changing the colors of your materials or textures. So if you zoom in, you can actually see the size of uh, your lumber size. However, sometimes it's easier to look at it in a different way and colors is a good way to do that. So we don't have to zoom in to figure out a size. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I've just gone over to the default tray here. I'm going to just, I'm going to uh click that on there so i can my default tray doesn't hide and i'm going to go to my little eyedropper here now if i wanted to change the lumber color i select it you notice it's come up here i go edit and now i can change the color of everything that is that size okay so now i can clearly see that my 9035 or four by one and a half is that size and I can do that also with say my floor joists so that I can distinguish which ones are the right size edit and we might make those say a blue and then we have our we've got a, a different size head there select eyedropper edit and we'll make that particular color I try to keep red as a load bearing element um, so that we can see where load is going to be uh, distributed and you can also see down here we have another size so I'm using the eyedropper selecting the material editing it and that way we can see whether anything else okay so you can see all of those lumber sizes are the same and and so on I can if you want to stick around I'll show you how to uh, to do that in a new model. I'll just open up a new SketchUp model at the same time. An interesting thing, you can actually center click your mouse button over the icon, SketchUp icon, and it'll open up a new SketchUp for you. Okay, right, so uh, I'm going to use my wall tool. I created a keyboard shortcut for, for doing this, and it's W. If you want to create a, a shortcut, you can go to Windows, Preferences, and shortcuts and you can type in say wall and you can see down here got plus big wall you can basically go in and type in uh, a, a, a shortcut for doing that so if I said W here and plus I'm gonna say no because I've already set it up okay so if I go W on my keyboard it's exactly the same as doing this here Okay, you'll notice inside of here you've got your, your your lumber size and your spacings and so on. Basically, let's not get too caught up here. Okay, and we'll put in, a, say, an internal wall. Internal only. I'm going to change my stud size to a 70 by 35. Here, and I'm going to put in a window, say, here. Using your right click menu is the best way to do it. Uh, and I'll add a door here. Let's close this one down. Add door. Inside of the, your add um, anything, you can go down and choose the, the size that you want to use uh, for your, your header. Okay, and then I'm going to just quickly create a whole heap of scenes at the top here which basically allows me to look at structure and you can see that everything's the same size uh, the last model I showed you didn't have this functionality and it was created in an earlier version but the reason why these studs each side of your uh, windows and doors are red is because that's a load bearing point and it enables us to follow a load path so if I was going to put some trusses in say here and stick trusses on top of this little roof here you'll understand probably a little bit more so I'll put in say a hip truss because the hip truss has a, a a girder which is basically a truss that holds more load and let's go from here to here say and you'll notice that I now have a red truss because this is holding all of these trusses here if I change my setback which is set back to the first truncated truss I might say let's have a look through here if you hover over here you can see what everything means so it's a really good thing to keep your eye out for ok 
Okay, Entrust. And here's my first truncated setback. Okay, I'm going to change this one here to 1200 just so we can see what happens here. And you'll notice that we're automatically adding materials. Okay, and now you see that my setback is falling over top of a head, and therefore I can follow a load path. It's not unusual for the frame company to sometimes miss this. Uh, it's easy to do, and therefore we need to upgrade the head size. So let's go back to changing the colors of different materials. Okay, I'm going to pin this again. I'm going to go to my select here. I'm going to edit my color. Okay, very easy to define now. I'm going to go back, I'm going to do my external walls. I try and keep away from red because if you remember to look for red, you know that we've got a, a point. So for instance, if I had Joyce underneath here, I want to make sure I had a block underneath that red stud. Uh, and I'm going to do my heads. Edit. And you can see that I have one more head there, but it's already defined. I don't need to worry about it. And you can also see that the colors are now defining my internal versus external walls if I'm using a different material. Hope that helps out, guys. If you have any questions, ask them below. If you like the video, click like. If you don't like it, click don't like, and we'll try and do better next time. Cheers, guys.